Joining me now is Professor Samuel Stoop, and he is the MRS Spring Meeting Plenary Speaker. Uh, Samuel Stoop, thank you for joining me. Sure, Let's pleasure. talk about um, your talk, which is titled Bioinspiration and Energy Landscapes in Soft Materials Design. Tell us more about what you'll cover in your talk. Yes, uh, well, in the talk this evening, I'm going to be talking about a new variety of soft materials, which are called supramolecular materials. So ordinary soft materials, the most common ones would be polymers, plastics, uh, the everyone is familiar with. Uh, in those materials, the structural units are bonded by very strong covalent bonds and they are formed irreversibly. Whereas in supramolecular materials, one can tune, you can engineer the strength of the bonds that form the material. Uh, so the strength of the bonds between the units. Mm -hmm. So this creates materials that are highly dynamic responsive, adaptable, very similar to things we see in biology. So that's where the bioinspiration uh, comes in. So if we go to the practicality of it, um, what sorts of functions do you envision? There are many functions. Uh, in fact, one of the functions that I'm particularly interested in right now is to use them for regenerative medicine because in order to regenerate parts of the human body, you need to signal cells to do things that they normally do not do, in, particularly in adulthood. Mm -hmm. And so you need to signal them. So we need materials to signal the cells, but in order to signal them properly, they have to adapt to the uh, nature of the cells. They have to reconfigure themselves and have a lot of dynamic character in order to signal. And so I think uh, these materials will have a great future as medical materials, as biomedical materials to regenerate parts of the human body. Uh, there are other functions that are connected to our energy needs. So for example, being able to configure uh, materials that make chemicals. So uh, for example, putting together catalyst and light harvesting elements to create a material that has the capabilities to, to make a fuel, for example, a solar fuel, by, through illumination uh, with light from the sun. So what needs to be done uh, to move this area of research beyond the early stages? Yes, so one, one of the great needs is to integrate computational work mm -hmm. uh, with this field. So I think over the next decade, there will be a lot of new computational capabilities. So as, 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 you, as you may know, we have uh, this uh, project, this initiative uh, that was created by President Obama called the Materials Genome Initiative. And the idea there is to integrate uh, experiment and computation in a very close way. So going to computers, we will be able to design many things before we do them in the laboratory and therefore search through a very, very large space of what are the right structures that we need to create the necessary functions. And what led you to focus your research in this specific area? Well, I've always been interested in biology, but, mm -hmm. I, but I never wanted to be a biologist. Uh, I wanted to be a material scientist, a chemist, and, 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 and that was much more interesting to me. And, uh, but I am really fascinated by what I see mm -hmm. in biology and wanted to imitate that uh, in synthetic structures for useful function. Well, Professor Stoop, thank you so much. You're and welcome. We look forward to your talk. Thank, thank you. you.